follow me. But in order to follow me, you guys have to leave your family. You have to leave your friends. You have to leave your house. You have to leave everything that you know and that you love. Yeah, come follow me. Let's move. Let's go to a new place. Will you follow me? No, no. Okay, well, what kind of questions would you ask me if I said that mild? Is there a catch? Oh. <laughs> okay, well, today, yes, Ella. Where is that specific place, right? And just like Jack read the story today, there is a man named Abram that God chose to use for his special plan. God chose a man named Abram to bless all the people. And so Abram, the Bible says he obeyed and he went. He went to the land. He obeyed God. You know, he didn't know all the questions. I'm sure he has questions, just like you guys. He had questions, but God didn't answer them all. But he still obeyed and he went and he believed God. He didn't know, where am I going? What direction is that? How many people? Uh, what are the people like? What's the new, is the, is the new place better than my old place? He probably had tons of questions, but they weren't answered, but he still continued to trust God because he's like, I trust God. God keeps his promises and I can trust him. So he had faith in God. But what did God promise him? What did God ask him to do? God asked him to leave his house, his home, his land, which by the way, was very important. And he said, leave your family. And he goes, and come to the place that I'm telling you to go. What did he promise? God promised a new land. God promised blessings, not just for Abraham, but for everybody. And God pro promised a great nation. You're going to have children and children and children and children and children. It's going to be a great nation. Now, boys and girls, there's probably just, that's great. But there's a tiny problem. Do you guys see the problem? You guys know the problem? What's the problem? They're going to parlay? Yeah, they have to leave everything they know. Yeah, that's a problem. But you know what the problem is? God promised that Abraham was going to be a father of many children. But Abraham had no children. Him and his wife, Sarah, had zero children. But God promised him that he would be a father of many. And so Abraham was sad. And he, God took him outside. And one night, God took him outside and he said, Abraham, look up, look up into, into the sky and count the stars if you can. can any, has anyone ever been able to count all the stars in the sky? Yeah. Oh, you could. Well, Abraham couldn't because there were so many stars that night. Yeah. And so Abraham could not. And God promised Abraham. Look, there's so many stars, you can't even count them. Your family is going to be as big as this. And Abraham didn't have children when God promised this, but he believed and he had faith. Now, Abraham said, well, okay, God, how can I be sure of this? And God did something. Do you guys know what God did? He did something to show Abraham that he's going to keep his promise. He said, okay, Abraham, go and get me five animals. And Abraham obeyed and got him five animals. He brought him a ram, a goat, a cow, a pigeon, and a turtle dove. And Abraham brought those animals, and then he cut them in half. Yeah, but not the birds. And then he placed the pieces across from each other. And the sun was going down, and he got tired, so he fell asleep. And in his sleep, God spoke to Abraham in a vision. And he told Abraham what was going to happen in the future. He said, your family is going to be a slave in another country for 400 years. But uh, I'm going to judge that nation. But I'm going to bless your family. And God promises. And he showed him. And he showed him that he is going to be a father of many. And so, but God said, you know what, though? It's not going to happen to you. It's going to happen to your descendants. You're going to live a long and peaceful life. And so Abraham, he believed. But, you know, when, the, when it was dark and he's still dreaming, he's still sleeping, you know what happened? There was a flaming torch and a burning furnace looking thing, and it went through the animals. And you know what that means? 
That was the presence of God. And God was telling Abraham, I'm going to keep that promise. It's not going to be you. It's not going to be your children. It's not going to be someone else. I'm going to keep that promise because my promises are forever. Now, boys and girls, we might, for, we might sometimes think that God forgets promises. He doesn't. Because when Abraham was 99 years old, he talked to Abraham again and said, you're going to be a father of many. Abraham still had no children. But God's still saying this. And so he said, you were, you're going to have many children. And of course, Abraham didn't have children. So Abraham, he, God showed him that he's going to keep his promise, change his name to Abraham. And then his wife was also named Sarah. Now, boys and girls, we might feel limited. We might feel limited. Like, I'm not good enough for this. I don't know how to do this. I'm not strong enough. But God is not limited. We have to remember that. He has nothing impossible. Nothing is impossible for him. So we don't, he, God can use us because God can use anyone for his purposes. God doesn't need you to be strong because he can make you strong. God doesn't need you to be the smartest person in the world because he can give you his wisdom, which is higher and better than anything in the world. God doesn't need us to be a certain way because God, you know when his power is the strongest in us? When we are weak because then his power is shown the best. And when we say, I need you, God, his power is the strongest. Boys and girls, I pray that you will remember when God makes a promise, he keeps it. Abraham and his wife, Sarah, had a baby. His name was Isaac. And God continued to keep his promise through his son, Isaac. So boys and girls, let's not limit God because we feel limited. But let's remember, God keeps his promise, and his promise came true also through his son, Jesus. He came to love us and save us and rescue us and invite us into his family forever. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church. We thank you for this family. We thank you for inviting us into your forever family. God, we thank you for the promises that we still have and that you continue to keep. And Lord, we just pray that when we are hesitant and when we're questioning if you are real, if your promises are real, we just ask that you would allow us to believe and have faith in you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.